This tutorial is for anyone out there who is brand new to the Mac. So if you're a PC user who is thinking about switching or a new Mac owner who just never had someone teach them the basics, then this is the class for you. New to Mac 2023, Ventura Edition, coming up next on Tech Talk America. One of the things that can be frustrating, especially for Windows PC users who are making the switch to Mac, is learning all of the different keyboard shortcuts. To help you make the transition process a little bit smoother, I have created a free PDF guide that you can download on my website at techtalkamerica.com. The account you see on your screen is a brand new account that I just created. All of the settings for this account are still set to the default options, so once we get into system settings, formerly known as System Preferences, I'm going to walk you through all of the settings that I kindly suggest you change. Today's video does contain a sponsored segment thanks to our friends at SoftwareKeep.com, but we'll get to them a bit later. Without any further ado, let's begin the class. The first place we always start when going over the Mac is Finder. Now, despite the fact that it says Finder here at the top left corner of my screen, Finder is actually this happy Mac icon that you see at the bottom left. This toolbar filled with icons is what we refer to as the dock, and of course, it can be customized. When you click on Finder, that opens a Finder window. This is very similar to Explorer in Windows. Before we get too deep into Finder, I want to first recommend that we make a few changes to Finder settings. And to do that, we're going to click where it says Finder here at the top left corner. Now, let's go into Settings. Let me move this window to the middle of the screen. And here on the General tab, I recommend that you keep most of this the way it is. The one area you might want to change is what do you want to see when you open up a new Finder window? By default, it shows you recent files that have been created or downloaded. Personally, I tend to prefer either the Documents folder or maybe the Application folder. So let me change it to that now. Let's now click over to the sidebar icon. The items that you see checked here are reflected here in this Finder window behind it. So for example, we have an easy access to recent items. AirDrop is a technology that allows you to send files from any Apple device to another Apple device that is in close proximity. Here we have the Applications folder, something you will definitely need all the time. It's helpful to have your desktop available here in a Finder window because sometimes if you have a lot of items on your desktop, it's easier to view it in list form. Also, of course, the Documents folder and the Downloads folder. The one that I recommend you add is the Home folder, which is this one right here with the House icon. Except in your case, instead of it saying Demo, it will have your name on it. For new users, I tend to recommend that they turn off the Tags feature. It's just something that tends to be used a lot more in business and not so much by the average everyday person. Let's now close that window by clicking this red dot. I'm going to click over now to the Applications folder to show you some of the different ways that you can view your different folders. The way you see these icons appear right now is what we refer to as Icon View, and it's represented right up here at the top. If I switch it over to List View, you can see that's how it looks in that case. Also, there is Column View, and then there is Gallery. I'm not really a big fan of this view ever, so I tend to keep the Applications folder always in Icon View. There's two other little settings that I recommend you change, which are part of the view options. And so while you're here in applications, I recommend that you go up here to the top, click on where it says view, and I want you to turn on two items here. Those two are the path bar that, if you look here at the bottom, is showing me where we are in the computer. So sometimes when you get to folders that live inside of other folders, it can be a little confusing to see where you are. This just makes it a little bit easier. The other feature that I like to add is I always like to show the status bar. So because we're right now in the applications folder, it's showing me how much free space I have available on my computer. The general rule of thumb that you should know is that you always want to try to have at least 20% of your hard drive free in order for your Mac to function at its peak performance. If you ever want to add one of your applications to the dock, all you have to do is click on it and drag it and drop it there. For example, one of the apps that I have that I use all the time is Final Cut Pro. It's how I made this video. If I want to add it to my dock, all I have to do is drag it and drop it there, and that way it'll stay there the next time I turn on my computer. Likewise, if you ever want to remove one of these apps, let's say you don't use Keynote, you can drag it and drop it off of the dock, and it's removed. 
Notice Keynote is still here in my computer. All I did was remove the shortcut. You see this little vertical line? If I click on that, I can drag up or down to increase or decrease the size of the dock. You're also able to do that from inside of system settings. The trash icon, you guessed it, is for trash. So if you have files like, oh, I don't know, screen recordings that I just did of this class that didn't go so well, you can put them in there and then click empty. I now want to talk a little bit about the Apple menu here at the top left corner. There's a lot of really important things up here. The first item you'll see is where you can find out information about your Mac, including your serial number, as well as your Apple Care status. Here in system settings, we have a lot of different things that we're going to go over. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. The App Store is one of the ways that you can download apps for your Mac. This requires you to create something referred to as an Apple ID. Your Apple ID is an email address and password that are used to purchase, for example, apps in the App Store, movies, music, etc. Here we can see recent items. It's not common, but if an app ever crashes, you can click on the Apple icon and go here to force quit. Or if you prefer, you can use the keyboard shortcut command option escape to force quit. Here it shows all the different apps that are running in the background. If calendar was crashing right now, it would appear in red. I just click on it and then click force quit. Below that, we have our options for sleep, restart and shut down, as well as options to lock the screen or log out of the current user account. Let's now go back to system settings because we have a lot to go through in here. Let's start with the first item at the top. This here is where you're going to sign in with your Apple ID. So give me a moment so that I can do that. I have a demo account that I use for this purpose. There's a lot of fake contacts. There's a few fake photos in there. Well, the photos are legit, but the contacts are all fake. So let me do that real quick. So now that I have logged in, I can access all the different information about my Apple ID. One of the other things that we need to talk about is iCloud. So iCloud is a way that you can synchronize and back up your most important information, especially your photos. So what I tend to recommend that you do is check pretty much everything in this list. The only reason why mine doesn't show passwords and keychain is checked is because this is a fake account. But normally, I absolutely do recommend that you use Keychain. That is if you also have an iPhone. It's just a really good idea generally to keep all of your information inside of one ecosystem. That way you only have one place to go to get all of your calendars or your contacts, etc. Let's now go here into Wi-Fi. This is where you can access the different wireless networks that are around you. So obviously you would click on the network and then type in the password. Here we have Bluetooth options. So if you have something like a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse, this is where you would go to connect that. We don't really need to talk about network. Notifications are something you'll probably want to take a little bit of time to customize. Basically, all of these different apps that you see here have the ability to deliver notifications. These come in a form of a pop up at the top right corner. So, for example, if you don't care about something like the tips app, you can turn that feature off so that it doesn't bug you. The focus mode feature that you see right here was recently updated for Mac OS Ventura, and it's got some pretty amazing capabilities. What this will basically do is give you the ability to shut off notifications from certain apps, potentially from certain people during certain conditions, whether it's based on where you physically are, what apps you're using, etc. If you want to learn more about how to use focus modes, check out my dedicated video on that topic. There's a link in the video description. General contains a lot of important information. For example, if I want to find out information about my computer, I can click on about for example, I can see which model I'm working on, the serial number, my Apple Care status. In general, I do tend to always recommend Apple Care. It's just a good idea as far as protecting your investment. Let's go back a screen and go over some of the other items here. Software update is where you can go in here to manually enable a software update. Certain updates you can have install automatically. If I click on this little lowercase letter I, which by the way is known as the inspector on the Mac, this is where you can customize what types of updates can run automatically. I tend to recommend different things for different people, so just go with whatever you feel comfortable with. Storage, this gives us an easy way to see what is taking up the most space in your computer. One of the things that I always do whenever I'm working with clients for the first time is I always like to help them clean up some junk files. This is usually one of the first places that I go to look for items that might be taking up a lot of space. Let's go back. 
The last item I wanted to point out in this list is transfer or reset. If you're ever going to be moving your data from your present Mac to a new one, this is one of the ways that you can move your data. However, if you are soon going to be purchasing a new Mac, especially if you're on one of the Intel Macs, you might want to check out my video on the best method to migrate your data because sometimes this isn't the best solution for everyone. Also important in this list is erase all content and settings. So if you're ever going to be selling your Mac, you wanna make sure that you click that button first. Let's now click over to appearance. Now, right now I have my computer set in light mode, but if I turn it over to dark mode, you'll see what happens, all the colors flip. So this is a lot easier on your eyes, especially later in the day as the sun is setting. What I tend to recommend is that you go with the automatic option here. So that way it'll start out in light mode and then when the sun sets, it'll automatically switch over into dark mode. Just makes it a little bit easier for you to shut down at the end of the day. You can also add an accent color, for example, in the top menu bars. I just like keeping it on multicolor, keeps it fun and interesting. Over here, we have the sidebar icon size. Notice how big the icons are right now. If I change it from medium to large, there we go. A little bit easier to read now. There's another setting that I'm gonna show you in a moment that is perfect for people who have vision issues uh, that will make everything a little bit larger. Another setting I tend to recommend for new users, you'll notice there's an option here to show scroll bars automatically when scrolling or always. For example, this list right here, you can see it goes beyond this. And what happens is on my trackpad, if I swipe up with two fingers present on the trackpad, it scrolls just like that. Again, especially if you're new, you might wanna switch it to always. And now you can see there's a nice little scroll bar there so that I know this menu continues on further. Let's now talk briefly about accessibility. One of the things I love about Apple and respect them for is they've done some really incredible things to help people who have different disabilities. One of my favorite types of clients to work with are people who have these different challenges and need this technology to be able to just basically function. For example, I have clients that I've worked with who've been diagnosed with ALS, and now they have options where you can use your head to control the cursor. You can even use your voice to do virtually everything on your Mac. So there's some really amazing accessibility options that are out there. Control Center is actually what you see up here at the top right corner of my screen. These two little icons give you access to several different types of settings, and you can customize them all in this list. Siri is the automated assistant on the Mac, and I personally use this all the time on my phone and my iPad, and of course my Apple Watch, but not so much my computer. If you wanna use Siri, go ahead, turn it on. When you see this screen asking about if you want to share audio recordings, I strongly encourage you to do so. They're not listening to your conversations. It just helps improve the accuracy. A lot of times when I work with people and they tell me that Siri never works for me, it's usually because they turn that feature off. I'm gonna turn Siri off because God knows it's gonna interrupt this recording. Spotlight allows you to search for anything on your Mac and now you can search for things well beyond your Mac. For example, movie show times or the weather or sports scores. The shortcut for Spotlight is Command Spacebar. If there's anything that you don't want Spotlight to have access to, you can uncheck it in this list. There is one setting in particular that I want to point out here in privacy and security. And when you get into this list, I want you to scroll down towards the bottom and let's talk for a moment about File Vault. I like to use metaphors to explain complicated things and I'll use one right now with File Vault. File Vault is like wearing a 50 pound bulletproof vest to be safer when what you really need is a lock and key. The big security risk is your passwords. Not so much this, especially if you're on an older computer, File Vault can make your computer run a lot less efficiently. If you notice that your laptop gets really hot to the touch, or if you constantly hear the fans running, odds are you probably have this turned on. This will also slow down every single aspect of your Mac. Does it make you more secure? Sure, but it's not really the big security issue so I generally recommend turning it off. Let's click into desktop and dock. Here you'll find options to, once again, change the size of the dock. There's also an option for magnification. If I turn this on all the way, you'll notice when I move my cursor over the icons, they get larger. Personally, I turn that off. 
Some people like to automatically hide and show the dock. If I turn that feature on, you'll see the dock goes away, but when I move my cursor towards the bottom of the screen, it comes back. Personally, I like keeping it on all the time. Let's now go into displays. If you have trouble with your vision and just need the fonts to be a little bit larger, you might want to consider clicking on one of these options. Because I'm recording my screen, I can't actually do that for you right now, but trust me, it makes everything bigger. Let's now go to wallpaper. Here at the top, we have dynamic desktops. Dynamic desktops will change over the course of the day. There's also an option for light and dark mode desktops. And if you scroll to the very bottom, you can point this to a folder of your photos or an individual photo. Let's now click over to screensaver. While screensavers aren't technically necessary anymore, the one that I really enjoy is this photo wall option. This will take your photos and make it look like they're on a gallery wall. It's a really cool effect. I tend to recommend it. Let's now skip down to internet accounts. If you have something like a Gmail address or a Yahoo account that you want to add to your Mac, just come here into this section and click add account. At this point, I'd like to skip ahead to trackpad options. This part is really important that we're all on the same page. On a Windows PC, you have a left click and a right click. On a Mac, this is referred to as a primary and a secondary click. How you secondary click is up to you and based on what you're using. For example, if you're using a mouse, you can make it so that when you click on the right hand side of the mouse, it gives you that second click function. In the case of my laptop, I have it set so that a secondary click is when I click down with two fingers present on my trackpad. Let's go over some of the other multi-touch gestures. Let's go here and just scroll and zoom. As you can see here, I have natural scrolling turned on. That just means if I scroll with two fingers present on the trackpad and move them up or down, it will scroll. When you're in something like a document or a website, you might need to zoom in or out to get a better look. To do this, just place two fingers towards the center of the trackpad and then spread them away from each other. To zoom out, perform the opposite action. Smart zoom, I tend to recommend that you turn off. It's just a little too easy to accidentally do it. The rotate function I don't find is very useful. You can probably turn that off as well. Let's now move over to more gestures. This first item here says swipe between pages and I can scroll left or right with two fingers. So let's say I'm on a website and then I navigate to another page, but I then wanna go back to the previous page. If I swipe with two fingers from left to right, it will go back a page. And again, if I wanna go forward, I do it from right to left. This next one is really important, how to navigate between full screen applications. We have yet to talk about how to resize windows and how to enter full screen mode, but this one is really important. And for those of you who use a trackpad, you're gonna use three fingers and swipe left or right to navigate between full screen apps. We'll get to that in just a moment. You can enable Notification Center two ways. You can either click on the date and time up here at the top right, or you can swipe with two fingers from the right edge over to the left. Now, personally, I tend to recommend that you turn this off. Again, this is one of those things, it's a little too easy to accidentally call for it. Mission Control is great if you have a bunch of different apps that are all on top of each other and you need to separate them in order to go back and forth between each other. Personally, I don't use Mission Control, but let me show you real quick how it works. Let's say I launch the Notes app, my Reminders, and my Contacts. If I swipe up with three fingers, you can see it separates all of those apps. Then I can put my cursor over one of them, and when I click down, that app comes to the front. There are other ways to navigate this. For example, if you use Command and the Tab key, it will show you all of the different apps that are open. And as I tap the Tab key, it navigates to which one. So for example, if I leave it on System Settings and then let go, System Settings comes to the front. App Exposé, I just recommend leaving off. Launchpad, I do use quite a bit. Now, Launchpad is the same thing as this icon that you see here at the bottom left corner of my dock next to Finder. When you click on Launchpad, it shows you all the different apps that are on your Mac in a view that very much resembles an iPad. The multi-touch gesture to accomplish this is you start with your thumb and three fingers spread wide and then bring them close together. Show desktop, once again, is one of those things that I feel like is a little too easy to accidentally turn on, so I tend to turn it off. 
If you ever want to add a printer or scanner to your Mac, just go here into printer and scanner settings, and then you can click add printer. It will then search for any printers that may be on the wireless network. One of the greatest parts of the Mac is that you usually never have to ever search for drivers or anything like that, like you do in Windows. Then you just click on the printer you want to add, and after a moment, it finds the driver for you, and then you just click add here at the bottom right. A moment ago, I taught you the multi-touch gesture to navigate between full screen apps and reference that I still needed to teach you how to put apps in full screen. I would now like to do that. Let's say I open up Safari and I wanna make sure that I'm using as much of my screen as possible. For now, I'll just go to my own website. To put a website or anything in full screen mode, all you have to do is go here to the top left and click on the green dot. So now you can see it takes up the entire screen. Referencing the multi-touch gesture that we just went over, if I wanna get back to my desktop, I just need to swipe with three fingers on my trackpad from left to right. If I want to get out of full screen mode, I can just move my cursor to the top of the screen, the navigation bar pops down, and now I can click the green dot again, and it restores it to its original size. The orange dot to the left of the green dot can be one of two things. You can either minimize the window into the dock, like so, and when I click it, it comes back to its normal size. Or if you go up here to the top right corner and go into Control Center, you'll notice that we have this new feature called Stage Manager. When Stage Manager is enabled, when you go to hit the orange dot, you'll see that it goes off to the left-hand side of the screen. So I tend to think that this is potentially a great feature for those of you who have a large screen that you're working with, something like an iMac. But if you're on something like a 13-inch MacBook Pro, you might find it easier to keep it so that it minimizes into the dock. Different preferences for different people. The red dot is almost always close. However, in a few cases, it is actually quit. For example, right now I'm in Safari. If I hit the red dot, you'll notice it still says Safari up here at the top left. That's because Safari is still running. If I wanna quit Safari, I'd have to click on it and then select quit. The next thing I wanna teach you is how to run apps in split screen mode. To do this, hover your cursor over the green dot, and you'll see that we have these other additional options appear. For example, I can tile this window to the left of the screen. Now I have to click on the Contacts app, and now that is running on the other side of the screen. Notice that we have this black bar running down the center with a little white strip in the middle. If I grab that and drag it left or right, you'll see that we can resize these windows. So if one needs a little bit more room than the other, you can make that happen. Because this is a new to Mac class, the last thing that I wanna do is make anyone feel overwhelmed with information. So here's what I wanna say. If you wanna learn more about the different apps that come with your Mac, whether it's Safari, the mail application, photos, or something else, I encourage you to check out my YouTube channel. Over the last 13 years, I've created over 700 tutorial videos, so there's plenty to explore. One of the techniques that I always like to cover in my new to Mac class is how to select multiple files. This works system-wide, so it could be that you're selecting a bunch of photos that you want to print out, or it could be that you're selecting a bunch of emails that you want to delete. To individually select files, just hold down the command key and click on each file. If the files that you want are in consecutive order, just click on the first file, then hold down the shift key on your keyboard, and then click the last item in the group. One of the little tips and tricks that I wanted to throw into this video is how to use a feature in the Mac called text replacement. I want you to go to the Apple icon at the top left and now go into System Settings. Now, I want you to scroll down in this list and click on Keyboard. Here on the right, you will see an option for text replacements. This is one of those little features that you can get really creative with. Here's an example of one that I think everyone will find to be very helpful. Click the plus symbol that you see here at the bottom left and in the column where it says Replace, I want you to type in the first letter of your first name three times. So in my case, I'll do triple D. Then in the column where it says with, I want you to type in your email address. Now click done. So let's say I'm on Safari browsing the web and I go to some website where they want me to fill in my email address. All I have to do is type D three times followed by the space bar. And when I do, it replaces it with my email address. And best of all, this feature syncs with your iPhone. So you can do it there too. Just for this segment, I need to switch over to my real account on this computer. One of the newer features on the Mac is you can now use your iPhone as a scanner. There are technically two different ways that you can do this, but I'm just gonna teach you my favorite way. 
On your iPhone, open up the Files app. And for this demo, I'm gonna use my desktop folder. Now I'm gonna tap on the three dots icon that are located here at the top right. Now I'll just tap Scan Documents, hold my iPhone over my document, and if there are more pages that you need to add to your document, you can scan them so that they're all part of one document. When you're done, click Save. Now check this out. If we switch over to my Mac, you will see on my desktop is that document. This is an example of why I do recommend using iCloud to store the files on your desktop and documents folder. It allows you to seamlessly go back and forth between devices. Another trick that I wanted to include in this tutorial is about a feature called universal copy and paste. As long as your Mac, iPhone, and iPad are all signed into the same Apple ID, you can copy something on one device and then paste it on another device. Windows users, of course, you are used to using Control-C and Control-V to do this. On the Mac, it's the same thing, but instead you use the command key. Whenever I work with clients who have just bought a Mac for the first time, one of the pieces of software that I like to discuss with all of them is Microsoft Office. A lot of people think in order to get Office, you have to pay a yearly subscription fee. But the thing is, is if you're a basic user, you really don't need to go with their annual plan. So here's a little trick, and this is where our sponsored segment comes into play. If you go into the video description, you will find a link that will bring you to this page. This is Office for Mac 2021 Home and Student Edition. Unlike Office 365, this is the version that comes with a lifetime license. And check this out, when you enter in coupon code TECH20YT, it will lower the price by an additional 20%, so it's a great way to save a little cash. If you ever need help with your Mac and would like to work with me one-on-one -on -one from the privacy of your own home, you can book a one-hour tech therapy session on my website at techtalkamerica.com. I work with both individuals as well as couples. We meet through Zoom and the entire session is recorded. Thank you so much for watching everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America, class dismissed.